is on displaying quantitative data with graphs, which is section 1.2. In this lesson, we're going to look at dot plots, stem plots, and histograms. We'll also look at the shape of a distribution. We'll compare distributions and use histograms wisely. One of our easiest graphs to construct and interpret, of course, is a dot plot, which in the previous lesson you saw an example of a dot plot already. To make a dot plot, draw a horizontal number line and label it with a variable name. Scale the axis from the minimum to the maximum value. Mark a dot above the location on the horizontal axis corresponding to each data value. Here's an example for the number of goals scored per game by the 2004 U.S. women's soccer team. And here's an example of a dot plot showing that information. Notice that the bottom is labeled with number of goals scored and each of the dots represent one of the values. Examining the distribution of a quantitative variable. In this we need to look for a overall pattern in the graph and anything that's unusual from the pattern. We describe an overall pattern of a distribution by its shape, center, spread, and individual values that fall outside the pattern are called outliers. The way to remember this is our SOCS, S-C-O-S, shape, outlier, center, spread. So we never want to forget our SOCS. Our next table and dot plot display environmental protection agencies estimates of highway gas mileage in miles per gallon for a sample of 24 model year 2009 midsize cars. In this one, if we describe the shape, center, and spread of the distribution, we also can answer the question, are there any outliers? As you can notice, the shape of the graph, as we look at it, has uh, roughly a distribution around the values from 22 to 33. We could easily figure out the center of the distribution by looking to see where the dots lie on the graph. And then we can also see the spread of the data. To check for outliers, it's important later on we'll have a test to check for them that we look at what that test is for outliers and not assume just because the point is farther out than other points that it's necessarily statistically considered an outlier. So we check to see for describing a shape, symmetry or skewness. We consider a distribution roughly symmetric if the right and left sides of the graph are approximately mirroring images of each other. A distribution is skewed to the right if the right side of the graph is much longer than the left side, and it is skewed to the left, or left skewed as we often say, if the left side of the graph is much longer than the right side. Here's an example of a symmetric graph, a graph that is skewed left, and a graph that is skewed to the right. Some of our most interesting statistics questions involve comparing two or more groups. We often will be comparing different sizes of groups and different numbers of groups. Whenever we're asked to discuss and compare, we often are going to be using shape, center, spread, and then sometimes we'll be talking about possible outliers. Comparing the distributions of the household size for these two countries, we would have to then use our socks in order to describe what they are. Stem and leaf plots 
are another way for us to graphically display small data sets. To make a stem plot, we separate the observation into a stem, which is all but the final digit, and a leaf, the final digit. We write all possible stems from smallest to largest in a vertical column and draw a line to the right of the column. Then we'll write each leaf in the row to the right of its stem. We arrange the leaves in increasing order out from the stem and then provide a key that explains what the stems and leaves represent. Do not forget to provide a key that explains the context of the problem. Here's data that represent the 20 responses of female AP statistics students when asked, how many pairs of shoes do you have? We have our stems, which are one through five. We add the leaves. Example, this would represent the value for 19, 13, 13, 13, 15. We order the leaves, making sure this time if you notice the difference is how we arrange the leaf part of the problem. And then we have to make sure to add a key. So here's how we would write a key. 4 dash 9 or slash 9 represents a female student who reported having 49 pairs of shoes. You cannot just write a number or an example. You have to pick one of the stem and leaf examples and then explain what it represents. Again, please be real specific. All you need to list is one example in the problem. We can also use what are called split stems or we can use what are called back-to-back -back stem plots. Here's an example of a split stem using the values for males. And we would generally use this again as it says when data values are real bunched up. We would then have the males on one side and the females on the other side for the leaves. And we would still give one example to what the problem is about in the key. A histogram is the most common graph of a distribution of one quantitative variable. To make a histogram, divide the range of data into classes of equal width, find the counter frequency or what's called the relative frequency, which is percent of, percentage of individuals in each class. Then we label and scale the axes and draw the histogram. The height of the bar equals its frequency. Here we have an example of some data on the percent of residents from each state who were born outside of the United States. We have percent of foreign born residents and number of states. So as you can see from 0 to 5 percent, that's this piece here corresponds with number of states or count of 20. There are several cautions when using histograms. First of all, make sure that you don't confuse a histogram with a bar graph. Secondly, don't use counts in a frequency table or percents in a relative, relative frequency table as data. Third, use percents instead of counts on the vertical axis when comparing distributions with different numbers of observations. And lastly, just because a graph looks nice, it's not necessarily a meaningful display of data. Here's a summary of what we learned today. And looking ahead, we're going to be studying mean and standard deviation, meeting an interquartile range, five-number summary and box plots, and look at possible outliers.